All right, everyone. So previously we covered the primary axis and the secondary axis. And in this video, we're going to be going through the X axis, which is the categorical axis for the combo chart. Now, as always, you have your two views that you can go through with pre-built visuals, but we are going to be going through the training view to take it step by step. As always, we're going to start off by adding an instance of the combo visual. We're going to resize it, and we can also disable the background and the title. Now, for the visual setup itself, it's going to be something relatively simple. We're just going to be using region as our category, and we're going to be using payout as our primary series. There we go. Now, once we open up the formatting options and open up x-axis, the first thing we notice is that we can also change the orientation of the labels. So we can have them in a horizontal, which is the default one, or we can switch it to a vertical or 45 degree angle. This is really depends on the necessity and the space that you have available for the visual itself. Now afterwards, you do of course have your font styling options. So you have your font family, font color, and so forth. In this case, we're gonna just slightly adjust them. We're gonna go for purple font color, family, we're gonna leave the same. For the style, we're gonna choose bold and italic. Um, for the font size, we're gonna just increase it slightly. There we go. And the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna also enable the title. The reason why I wanna enable a title is because one of the things that the combo visual does is it allows you to see previously selected categories. So for this, we can actually start to enhance the visual. So underneath the regions, we can add departments. There we go. Now, if we click on one of the regions, let's say Canada, you can see that the previously selected category is now as a used as a title for the visual, whereas the rest of them are visible on the same level. So this approach follows through the levels. And one thing to note is that it only showcases you one previous level and it doesn't show you the full hierarchy of the visual. So this is just something to keep in mind. Now, if we go back to the formatting options right here and open up again, x-axis, the last thing that I wanted to cover regarding the x-axis is gonna be maximum and initial unit width. These two settings essentially allow you to fine tune the visual and that's the width of the columns. So when I first open up, what the chart essentially tries to do is to force the columns to be all within a single viewport. So you have the most available at a given time. Now, in some cases, even in this one, right, we can see that Australia, you can't see the full name and the same happens for Caribbean, South America and so forth. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna adjust the initial unit width and I'm gonna change it to hundred. Now, when I first change it, you can see that nothing really happens. And that is because you need to reload the page and allow the chart to fully refresh itself. And there you go. You can see that now, instead of having all the columns in a visual view on the initial load, we actually only see four of them. And if you remember the interactions, one of the most important ones in this case is the ability to freely move around the chart. So you can fine tune that zoom level and just find all the columns if it's still necessary. Or, like I mentioned through the interaction section, is it allows you to fine tune that initial zoom. Now, the last but not least is max unit width. So, if we go back to the x axis, the last setting we didn't touch is going to be max unit width. The max unit width essentially determines the boundaries, which are going to be the maximum width for one of the single columns. And this is going to be really important for those cases where I think about the drill down, and on the second level, you have only like two or three categories. So if you keep it on a high number, it's just gonna allow that column to expand to the full potential. Whereas if you leave it on a smaller number to say, let's say two or 300, it's gonna be more narrow allowing you to have it within the single viewport. All right, everyone. So that's it for the X-axis customization. And now we're ready to move on to the next chapter.